everybody, and welcome back to Rise of the Podcast. I'm Jeremy. I'm Kara. And I don't have a joke this time. I'm Brownie. Well, that is a joke in and of itself. <laughs> Right? Only if you're a repeat watcher. Uh, that's true. Otherwise, no one would know what you're talking about. Yeah. So lots of fun stuff. We made a big announcement last week. Kara's got an awesome shirt this week. That's such a great announcement that Kara's got an awesome shirt. <laughs> well, it just relates to last week's uh, episode. But Kara, it's her birthday as of at this when airing. Yeah. yeah. When this Happy birthday, birthday today, Kara. Woo, Kara. How's it feel to be 40? <laughs> no, 20, hey, 29. Hey, what 40 looks like. Just kidding. <laughs> I've learned quickly that you were never supposed to call a woman older than 29. So when so, they hit their 29th birthday, it's just 29, 29, 29, exactly. 29. I'll just be 29 for, you know, ever. So Kara's 29. Happy birthday. Thanks. What are you going to do next year when you turn 29? Celebrate. <laughs> Drink. <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess. Can't do any partying right now. No. No. Virgin, virgin margaritas for this girl. Right. And uh, she's even cut back on caffeine, which we've yeah. uh, probably talked about. It's a difficult life. But, all right. Video games and the Star Wars. Have... Wait, we need to talk about like the email and stuff. Oh, okay. All right. Right? I mean, it's just smart. Yeah, yeah let's, let's, let's hop into it. That. Yeah. Okay, Did you so... know that we have an email address now? Contact at Rise we've, of the Podcast. We've entered the 2000s. <laughs> dot com. You can email us, and we were, are going to have listener mail added to the podcast where we will talk about whatever you send us. You can tell us a story. We'll talk about it. You can ask us a question. We'll answer it. You can at least we'll attempt to answer. Send me a math equation and I'll try to solve Ew. it. You yeah. compliment Jeremy and we'll censor it and never let ah. it <laughs> I'll print it out and put it on my wall. We should we should do a roast me with Jeremy. That would be pretty fun. <laughs> that sounds um, like a live stream thing. But yeah, no, it's just uh like we wanna we we like doing this, but we also know that like you guys wanna get some like bonus value out of it. And, like interaction's always awesome. We want to know what you guys think about like the various things that we bring up or want to see what type of content you guys want us to make. So the best way to do that, email us at contact at riseofthepodcast.com. That's right. It's up. I check it a lot. And Chris even's like, hey, do we get an email? Refresh? Nope. No email. Poor Jerry. I was hoping we would have gotten at least one. We posted on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash rise of the podcast. <laughs> And, uh, like, you know, some people liked it. I get that it's not, like, a meme or anything interesting. We but, should like, turn it into a meme. Just, like, something. Like, forever alone. <laughs> <laughs> that's the pot, That's the email is forever oh, alone. But uh, I or, might. I'm thinking, like, I'm thinking the Drake meme where it's, like, email at Rise the Podcast. Ugh. Oh, yeah, exactly. Drake <laughs> memes. <laughs> that's, right? There you go. Yes. People um, would like that. My next thing I was going to do was reach out to our top fans on Facebook and just let them oh. know that we care about them, but they should send us an email. <laughs> yeah, it's like, right. it's it's a, it's now a burden to okay. be a top fan. You must do... <laughs> Funny story, though, then. So when you email us on Rise of the Podcast, because it just goes to the three of us in general, we just do a little thing where we'll put, like, the response, and then Jeremy or Brownie or Kara, when you reply to a thing. A woman did send us on Facebook, what I would be the equivalent of listener mail, is uh, her son watching... Empire Strikes oh, Back, yes. in that little video. Mm-hmm. So we'll talk about awesome. that for just a quick second. So it was his reaction. Uh, the mother was filming the reaction, and how old was he, Chris? Can you remember? Oh, he's he... pretty young. I was just, but looking at the picture, so Chris I'd is say looking it up. Like four or five, maybe. I want to say he was five, but uh, he was watching Empire Strikes Back, and the reaction of when uh, was it when Lando betrayed everyone? Like when uh, Vader is in the uh, when they open that, the doors been... and yeah, in Cloud City, and. Uh, the little guy is upset. Yeah. There's genuine concern. He is feeling majorly betrayed, and it was the it was the cutest little video. So we did get listener mail, just not to our official like contact email. Right. Yeah, and I mean like, and at this point, like we'll forgive you if you just want to hit us up on Facebook. Yeah, or whatever, you can send but, us a message too. Yeah. But it feels it feels more more like accomplished to us if you actually send us an email. Yeah, <laughs> totally. All right, so uh, it was from Ashley Twig. And he is, where does he say? Oh my goodness. Uh, my son watching Empire when he was two. two. When he was two. And like the, the face, like the, this face is like. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's good. The it's... cave scene, it's when Luke encounters Vader in the cave. Uh, got it. Dagobah. Yeah. Got it. So, so, so I've, I've super heard, adorable. I've heard a lot of people question. How young is too, or like, when should you introduce your kids to like Star Wars? 
There you have your answer. Well, I told Jeremy, I was like, when kid comes out, Star Wars is going to be playing on the TV. And Lord of the Rings. We'll have two TVs in there. Lord of the Rings on one, Star Wars. Yeah, we're going to have those eye things just like, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Poor child. Our kid's going to be a nerd. It's fine. It's fine. It's, It's forced on there. Um, but yeah, so we have it. We have contact email now. You can send us an email. That'd be awesome. I will read if, if you give me permission to read the email. I will read the email. Oh yeah, sorry Ashley, if you don't give us permission to talk about it, <laughs> I feel like that's like. Um, oh well. Yeah. Oops. Sorry. <laughs> I think she said we can double check. I think she posted it to Instagram. So if it's on the gram, it's out there. It's free. It's. It's yeah. It's free to. It's free and share. clear. Yeah, we're good. Um. What uh? What other topic do we have? Any other thing before I get to? Oh yeah, that? it's on Instagram. Oh yeah, we're good. Yeah. Yeah. We we're good. good. We good. Thank you, Ashley. Either way. <laughs> no, that was awesome. It was really cool. It was really fun to see the excitement. And when we started doing Star Wars every day, that was kind of a thing I wanted to try to get to was be able to have listeners send in stories and we can turn them into a Star Wars every day style video. Cause yeah. I really liked those. We have a teleprompter in the corner now, old cranky that <laughs> we just hasn't collected been used dust. in a minute. Hasn't been used. COVID really threw off our schedule. It, it just blew up everything. It just demolished it. It blew up everything. Like, everything, everywhere. Totally did. But, uh, all right. So, you know how to get a hold of us. Now you can tell us your thoughts on the announcement, the thing I just want to talk about. I'm super excited because of Star Wars Squadrons. So, Battlefront 2 is... There's an old Battlefront 2 and a new Battlefront 2. The new one's come a long way since it's released. Mm-hmm. Everyone was mad about microtransactions and everything. But regardless... Nobody likes microtransactions That game did flying correctly. It is just amazing. <laughs> it, you, hey, I don't like macaroons and i don't get mad at people who like macaroons you don't like macaroons i don't know they just it's a lot of hype for a jeremy likes people. everything don't worry about it <laughs> I, don't think it's like, I don't think i've come across no, a food like... that jeremy does not like brussels sprouts okay well besides brussels sprouts Every, but everyone doesn't like brussels sprouts. <laughs> okay funny thing funny thing i am the only one at my work that does not like brussels sprouts you Every... work with a bunch of weirdos seriously they're all like oh brussels sprouts are so good i'm like I guess if you if you decide to stick your hands inside of mouths for a living, you can like Brussels sprouts and it won't be weird. Yeah. <laughs> I stick my hands in mouths no, and I don't. I'm just saying, like that's acceptable in their career yeah. field. Oof. Um, no, I, I, um, I just I don't get excited about flying games. I don't right. either. Like, so I'm like, like, I, I, I have I'll have fun playing one. I'm not going to say that they're bad games. Right. It's just not what I'm lining I'm lining up around the block for. Just right. Because. Right. I find them to be too difficult for the reward you get out of them. Right. Well, see, okay, so there's a wide variety of stuff. Now I'm just, my brain is full of just like, brrr. all right, so we have one end of the spectrum, which is like arcade style flight games, which is where I'm at. And I'll get specifically to it because it's just Star Wars related. But you go the other way and you got people like uh, Gus Sirola from Rooster Teeth, who yeah, like gets flight full simulator, blown yeah. flight simulators. And his enjoyment is like taking off and then doing nothing for three hours while the plane just flies from whatever the destination. And he's just like, what? sits in the chair. People love it. Yep. People Honestly, love flight simulators. I, if I, if, if I had a full flight simulator set up, I'd that probably, you might like. I'd okay, sure. So you're just not on the arcade side of it, but Chris was like, <clears throat> hello, this is your captain's... Hello, this is Brownie. Here's my joke for the uh, flight. <laughs> yeah. You crack right. your joke. It's a balmy 68 degrees outside. We are approaching the landing strip, and we uh, enjoy airtime with Brownie. And then you like, mm, you grab the things, and you did the joystick, and you hit it in. You hit autopilot. There's something about meticulous procedural operation that I find satisfying. Routine, right? Just, just straight up, like... You got a checklist. Pilots have checklists. They can't fly without their checklist. Pilots are just input output people. That's all they are. It's like, oh, uh, 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 what do I do? Let's check the checklist. Like, they have to go out by the book for everything they do. It's everything's procedural, mm-hmm. uh, and it works. I mean, yeah, okay. So you're gonna have like intuition that takes over in certain circumstances. Yeah, no, we, we get, you're making a generalization. Yeah, That's yeah, fine. Yeah, exactly. So. It, you know, people love that stuff. And so he's just, you know, sets, and then the plane flies for three hours. And he just sits back pretending he's the pilot. And then just, uh, yeah. <laughs> Has a laptop with Netflix open next yeah, to it. Yeah, <laughs> right. And then, you know, they go to land. I mean, I've, I've heard that, like, from 500 feet, they can activate autopilot. And then they just, like, the plane can even land itself. But they just choose to take over to land the plane. So you really don't need, you know, 
pilots anymore. The plane does most of it itself. Well, so if their landing procedure for the plane is anything like the landing procedure for our drone at work, I would never trust it. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a funny story. This freaking drone. Okay, so I'm just going to break all it right, before right. we get back to your thing. So we have this drone at work that I've already just thrown under the bus about a thousand times. <laughs> And I was on flying it the other day, and it has it, so it has a thing where you get, you hover into a safe position. I'm gonna mimic your hands here, or whatever, so people can. Get oh the top yeah, of so you get the hover. <laughs> so and it's I usually bring it to about ten feet, okay. right? So it's like it's it's not super high, whatever. And then if you press and hold a button, it'll initiate a landing sequence, and then it starts coming down, and then eventually it'll contact the earth, and then the blades will turn off, right? There's two problems with this thing. One is there's no easy override for it. Right. Right? So if it's coming down weird, you can you can grab the sticks and try and do something, but it's still in like auto mode. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So that it's gonna, makes the same way. So it's going to do what it thinks is right with your inputs. Yep. So you can't really do anything about it. Thing two is it comes down too fast. So if you're taking off from asphalt and it's going to land, it like skips a little bit, right? So here's the problem. If you have any type of crosswind at all when it's coming down, when it hits and skips... Because, <laughs> exactly, because it's in just auto-descend mode, it's just <laughs> powering down the, the rotors. It's not trying to stabilize itself right. anymore. So if it bounces a little bit, all of a sudden it's out of alignment and it just pulls itself over. And then it just starts spinning upside down. Oh my gosh. And so I was flying with a client and I was, I'm was i bringing the thing down. I hit the land thing and we're uh, there's swirling winds, which is why I'm landing. Because I, like, I just couldn't get the shot. Yeah. And it starts coming down, and I see I could tell at about five feet that it was going over, and there's nothing I could do. So I'm just sitting there with my arms crossed, watching this thing, just like with the maddest expression on my face as it just turns upside down and starts like blasting itself into pieces. So well, it's got to be a little bit embarrassing, doing, you, especially in front of a client. Yeah, well, so I, I, because it's happened to me so many times, I'm beyond the embarrassed stage and just at the disappointed in my equipment stage. <laughs> I'm not mad. I'm disappointed. Extremely. <laughs> when we were talking about it, I I do think that that programming on that drone, I think it does shut off its flight stabilization. Mm-hmm. I totally think it does, for sure. Yeah, because it's trying to minimize processes just, to get it, yeah. It just gets it down, because like... The Mavic, you when you initiate the so the Mavic's the same way. You initiate the landing sequence and to override, you have to press the sticker, do something. It just doesn't override it. You have to swipe cancel. Yep. So you have to do two things, and it like they're not fluent. Like you, you're on the sticks, and then you have to hit a different part of the controller. And you're talking about you've got like less than seconds to fix this. Yeah, you know, so you're gonna be like, eh, eh, and then go back to getting in control again. It's not like you can fly with your finger at the like cancel and and then send it back <laughs> yeah. up again or something. But the Mavic's landing, the stable is it's like land and completely fine well and this is another thing that blows my mind about the work drone thing it's like even when it's like in hover mode and it's just like trying to keep its position it has probably a 10 foot radius where it considers that to be okay that's insane so it's like it'll sit there and it'll just kind of do like small like mini like orbits around where it thinks and i it might just be because it's a really old drone and that was like good enough for the day right but it's just like so. Then when you get into an environment where like you can't have that level of tolerance, right? You know, it's like right. so. It's I'm like, I was trying to get the shot, and I'm like, the drone's moving, and I'm not, it's like I'm not trying to move the drone. I was like trying to keep everybody aware. It's like the drone is correcting itself in a direction. I'm not trying to correct it. I'm gonna try and keep it away from you, but be ready, right? <laughs> if this thing just decides to go somewhere on its own, so I'm like fighting against this swirling wind and trying to bring it down. It sounds way more exciting than it actually was. It's just me being annoyed at how crappy this drone is. I just love you ever said, my, my favorite video is the washing machine out of balance. Like somebody took oh, a yeah. and do it. And there's a little, it just Wasn't shakes a itself Mark apart. Robert video? There's a, 10 people. I mean, anybody with a broken washing machine will do it. Yeah. I, I, I saw some people in like Russia do it in 1999 when the internet was coming out. You know, they threw the thing in there and it bounced all over the place and fell apart. And somebody edited in a real, real life doodle subreddit. People do. Oh, the, yeah. And then the, the googly eyes on the <laughs> thing and it comes apart. Um, I just imagine that's yeah, what those that are thing hilarious. is. It's like, it's like looking at you like it's like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. And then as soon as it gets, there's that point when you know something's going to happen and you can't hit the brakes anymore. Yep. I've had it in multiple different experiences. And it's like, as soon as it's like that, it's going to go, and then just bounce, bounce around because the motors are still going to spin. Yep. And Even that's the, the thing. The it, does, it doesn't understand broken. that it's upside down. Right. Whatever is inside it that helps it gyroscopically decide to stabilize itself does not know when it's upside down. Right. So it's just sitting there skipping upside down across the pavement. 
That just it reminds me like it looks like a probably like a washing machine out of yeah. You know, no, bounds, it's, yeah. it's like <laughs> so it's simultaneously like hilarious and terrifying because like these things are spinning really fast, like throwing like rocks and stuff at you, right? Like, and no. you have to get you, you have to go over and pick it up while right. the blades are going, and then as you're turning it right side over, it re-triggers the the thing to be like, oh, I shouldn't be upside down, and then the then the rotors will turn off. That's oh ridiculous. my gosh, so I yeah, feel like, that's dangerous. Like it's crazy dangerous. So it's like I, I land the thing that's spinning around and I'm all frustrated. So I just like walk over like ah, freaking thing. This is gonna be like. I think I think that's when people realize that like it wasn't my fault because I was mad at the thing and I was just like run over the spinning blades of death and just like. Brr. You need to get those uh, chainmail gloves. That when I worked at Wendy's, we had oh, chainmail yeah, gloves. Ones. We never used them, but you're you know right when you're cutting. Yeah, when you're cutting things. Yeah, hence the finger in the chainmail. Oh, <laughs> I've got See. all my fingers. Thank you very much. I thought you were uh, the uh, Duke from uh, Princess Bride. Uh, right. Six fingers. Yeah. <laughs> um, just to give him a shout out, which we have to get him back on here. I saw, so Justin's a big fan of ours and we're a big fan of Justin. So why not throw a plug out there for Justin? Yep. Um, a, he got engaged, which was awesome. And B, he got engaged. Engaged. Right? I, I was just telling Kara about that on the way down there. And then I didn't notice, I didn't even notice it was Photoshopped. He could have. I didn't either. He, yeah. I, like, I feel like, like he could have kept like fine keep your secrets like he yeah. never had to tell us and we would have never known but uh once he showed it it seemed super obvious i know and i was I like know. i got tricked I by know. bad photoshop i know um those but, letters had to be pretty easy to photoshop well you see so if there was a d in the shot somewhere yeah, it would have been really easy mm-hmm. you could have just separated the d and brought it up there i was looking at the g like i was thinking oh i would have done it i'm like hmm could i have used part of the g and then mimicked it a little bit i could have but just throwing a D is probably re- way quicker right back in there, you know. I When we did our announcement, our pregnancy announcement, I had Jeremy That's double what he check did. everything like five times. He could have just went to our picture and stole the D from Padawan. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he put that much effort in. <laughs> it's just easier to type a D in Arial font. I know, and just send it send it in there. But uh, I just saw that, um, that he posted to Cinephile that so Stella, his fiance Stella, now. Yeah. She's never seen any of the Marvel movies, so yeah, they're gonna do. They, a... Yeah, they started the series last week where um, they're gonna progress through watching each of the Marvel films, and in exchange, he has to watch twenty three films of her, her choice. I made Jeremy watch Ever After the other day. I know it's a good movie. How many times can you tell the Cinderella story? Three, apparently. <laughs> Ever After, Walt Disney, and. There's the been a, how many Cinderellas have there been? But a lot. Ever After is like its own take. It's like a real life version. The only of saving it. grace in that movie was it had Leonardo da Vinci in it. Not da Vinci's friggin' hilarious in it. it. He was funny. Interesting. He's funny. In when that I, when I think of the the era that Cinderella takes place, I think that's like way pre da Vinci. I think like I'm thinking like six seven hundreds. Right. Um, you know, Da Vinci was like yeah. the 15, 14, yeah. 15, somewhere in there. 16s. And that's where this one takes place. So, um, no, that's maybe because I almost said Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. I just read a funny thing that, um, James Cameron came out and said that, uh, Matthew McConaughey was going to get the role, but when Leonardo DiCaprio showed up to, uh, like uh, audition that every woman in the building came down to watch his audition. Yeah. And so he figured if this is this guy's this poppy with the ladies, he might want to make him the lead. So that's you, why that for did. Titanic? Yeah, Titanic. Okay. Yeah. Have you got you guys have seen speak, speaking of DiCaprio and Da Vinci, you've seen the meme where this woman uh took pictures. She posted on Twitter and she took pictures of the of a sunset and it's beautiful and she's like, Oh, my camera took such good pictures of the sunset. I mean, Leonardo DiCaprio could have been. It could be a Leonardo DiCaprio painting. <laughs> and somebody responded below, and they said, not to be confused with the award-winning Leonardo da Vinci. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. Who's famous for, like, the Mona Lisa. And... I mean, he he was way ahead of his time. He, he did the, Like, helicopters, the, airplanes. He did I the mean... man one, right? Yeah, the Vitruvian man. Yeah. Da Vinci, he's, like, my favorite artist. Like, Oh, he's love from that. that he's the idiot of that planet on Futurama. Yes, he is. I love that. Um, so there's funny. a joke in Ever After where they're like, "Oh, I was expecting Michelangelo," and he's like, "Ah, oh, he's too busy painting roofs." He, was like, <laughs> no, he, he said he's stuck underneath the ceiling in in Rome or something like that. Yeah. It was a funny joke. It's, yeah. I like that. Good old Sistine Chapel. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I have seen that in person. Never gets old. Is it impressive or is it? It like, is. Meh. 
I almost cried walking into the Sistine Chapel. I was like, Are they cutting onions? <laughs> right, right. They they don't let you take pictures at all. They don't want the flash to ruin anything. So you like, you just don't take pictures. It's just so funny because it's like, there was a period in photography when people were using, like, at home film cameras. Flash went off basically every photo. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Every photo, the flash would go off. And it's just funny because it's like, if I were to go in there and photograph it, I would just get a tripod, low shutter speed, you know, right. let it just send it because it's not a, it's a static object. You know, mm. No flash I mean, required. I went there seven years ago, so. I'm, I'm still sure they probably have no yeah, flash. Yeah, I would imagine. Yeah. Well, they it's the same the thing like when you fly the drone and people harass you. It's like people are just like, oh, no flash photography. It's like, what century do you live in? Well, here? here's the thing. Your average tourist probably uses flash photography. Well, even though they use their you're phone. Right, you're right. Yeah. And then. I can't believe to tell, like, the other thing that cracks when we talk about auto, people even use their phone and then the flash will try to go off. So they yeah. get mad and they're like, no flash. And it's like, if your phone needs flash, your picture's not going to turn out. Yeah. And yeah. they're just like, nope. And they take it and it's well, so noise like, city. I was, so funny that I was watching um, a documentary about, uh, there's a series of documentaries put up with the NFL Network. Uh, about each year's like Super Bowl champion, so it's called America's Game, and then it'll be about you know like the 1996 Green Bay. So it'll be about Tom Brady, right? and Tom Brady, yeah. and Tom Brady. That's why there, there's well, you know, there's a lot of New England Patriots nah, ones, to be yeah. sure. But <laughs> the point is like when it, like up until like the mid 2000s, whenever they'd show like the 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 super slow mo of the lead up to the kickoff, there's all these like flashes going on, and that yeah. doesn't happen anymore. No, that's true. It's yeah. like something like one of the most like awesome looking sights you can see in sports just doesn't happen anymore. Yeah, all the no. fl- yeah, all the flashes. Now that you mention it, yeah, I, you don't you just that, do they point that out in the documentary or is that something you noticed? No, it's just something I noticed. It's That's like, a yeah, cool thing to like you could anymore. make a video not- about that. You, did you notice like when it started to no, well, I, I, I'm sure you could go back and find it. I, well, it's just like with the advent of cell phones. So the thing is like it's kind of, where I first actually noticed it. Is when I'd watch like concert movies. It was like it was like Queen Lyman concert or whatever. Right. You inevitably get to the point where people have their lighters out doing whatever. Well, you yeah. can't take a lighter into public anymore, basically. Right. right. And now it's always people's cell phones. Right. People will turn their cell phone light on like their lighter or whatever. Right. And was there like, was even know, a lighter app. Yeah. And I was like, and I saw that. And I was like, huh, interesting. And then that made me think it's like cell phones replace like a lot of things when it comes to like live mm-hmm. events stuff. And it's like. Nobody's going to take the time to be like, I'm going to put my phone on a flashlight so the for, opening kickoff of the Super Bowl, it looks like blah, blah, blah. no one's going to do that. Right. right. You know, and it's like, and if you're recording video, like, you're, that's not going to turn the light on. Right. You know, so it's just like, the stands are just like, meh. Yep. Mm-hmm. I, I, like, I'm sure I could go back and just, like, find, like, where it happened. I would guess that it's going to be somewhere in the, in between, like, 2007 and 2011 where. Yeah. You'll probably just start to see a slow drop off in that period yeah. until. That's yeah. a fun thing to think about. So, Interesting. Now, like that now that we've completely taken ten minutes from Jeremy's story, right? Let's bring it back. Let's to, fly back to Squadron. <laughs> yep. Okay. So yeah, not trying to. So there's two sides of the spectrum when it comes to flying. <laughs> there's flight sims and there's arcade style. And there's the so Squadrons was announced. It's made by EA, which everyone hates EA, but whatever. They did flying well in Battlefront Two. Flying is really fun. You can do cockpit view. Or you can do outside view. Both are fun to me. I can't like play competitively inside the ship, but I can hop in there for a real experience. It's confirmed. It's VR compatible. So I am staring down the barrel of a Star Wars VR capable flight simulator, more or less. It's the closest I'm going to get to being My like in a starship. My only problem with the VR, like they're, you're going to be moving around so much. It's but, like it's like playing the roller coaster VR. There's a like, difference. Not really. There's you're a moving difference. around. You're like. I feel like it's sick. Games where you're supposed to motion, like walk somewhere, like Skyrim or any of those types of games, they have you jump for a reason because the walking doesn't feel unnatural. Flying, it feels a little bit different because you're like in a seated position to begin with. So you're, you don't feel like you should be moving, but you're seated and moving. But I can like handle flying like VR. like when you're like going sideways and stuff and, you know, don't you think you'd... That'll be interesting to see whether or not there yeah. is an effect for that. You know, I think it'll be all right. Jeremy's I think I can do it. Rig up some sort of thing where, like, if he you, you get, like know. a massage chair that like responds right. to the right. <laughs> he'll, he'll go and steal, you know, like the little uh, spaceship machines you can ride when as a kid. Yeah, we'll put a quarter in. Right, You'll Jeremy will go. Jeremy, like, Kara, put another quarter in. <laughs> <laughs> Experience in turbulence, but so um, it's just going to be fun. It, you, there's ship customization, so you can like custom paint your Tie Fighter. You can custom to do the interior, do your weapon loadouts. 
Um, it's just going to be really fun. And it's 50% uh, Empire, 50% Rebel. So it's the good generation. It's the good ships. It's like, it's going to be awesome. I'm really excited. I told Jeremy I would try it because we get it for Xbox. And so with Xbox, we can share it between the systems. Mm-hmm. Um, the one thing I thought was cool was when we were watching the extended trailer, Yeah, Harrison Dula makes an appearance. And again, from Rebels. I've okay. talked about, again, Star Wars is like, I love the interconnectedness of the characters making their cameos and appearances. So it's like, you're probably going to learn a little bit more like Rebels lore that you wouldn't get unless you played the game. So and it all most, adds to and the And like on the Rebels side, you can choose to play as one of Poe's parents, I believe. Poe Dameron's parents. Yeah. Because they, you know, they were rebel pilots and he was raised as a rebel, became a spice smuggler. Or was it spice? Yep. And then ended up. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I want to say this definitively now. I I've, I've dug around so much on freaking Star Wars Wikipedia or whatever it is, right. Wikipedia. So there, uh, spice can refer to two different things: illicit yes. drugs or actual freaking spices. Spice. Right. And everyone is like, was like, whatever you say, spice, that means drugs or whatever. Like it could, like I just want to say, like definitively, it can mean two things. Right. It's kind of like Coke. In the South, like how you ask for a Coke, like what yeah, kind? Yeah. You ask for spice. You can be talking about normal spice yeah. or spice spice. So. I thought you were referring to like Coca-Cola or cocaine. Yeah, there is that <laughs> no, too. But yeah, like it's Coke like, or Sprite. Yeah, it's like, it's like, what kind of Coke do you want with your lunch or whatever? Right. It's like, oh yeah, I want a, you know, Mr. Pib. Right. Right. Yeah, so. But anyway, so anyway, the trailer came out and then the launch trailer came out. Another big, like, so anyways, I'm super excited about it. When is that release? Uh, October 2nd. And when does the new Xbox release? Uh, in November or December. Oh, I, you know. Oh. Well, so on a different note, <coughs> Cyberpunk got delayed again. And so The Witcher is a, like a very popular video game. I love, oh, medieval setting. It's like better than Game of Thrones for immersiveness in like that environment. The maps are Witcher. huge. In which are beautiful looking environments. You go from like, classic medieval dark ages mm-hmm. castles and towns and everything to you get on a boat you go to like a viking era Skellige islands where it's just beautiful the map is spread out amongst all these islands and they're all massive there's giants and giants like monsters galore all unique takes on all these classic monsters amazing game so their next one coming out is called cyberpunk it's future game 2022 is or well no like it's cyberpunk 2080 2088 it's saying the same publishers are releasing a new. Yes. Okay. C- CD, as in uh, Charlie Delta Project Red, and then if you say it fast, it now it reminds me of like. And Project has a K instead of a C. Doesn't yeah. It? CD yeah. Project Red, so it makes me like, wait a minute, like they're CD, like they're. It's like, is that what they're going for in their name? Is it a play on words? CD, like. Ooh. Or maybe it's just compact disc. Right. <laughs> Project Red. Um. So that so they delayed their game again. It was supposed to come out in February of this mm-hmm. year. Then they delayed it to September. And now they're delaying it till November. So um, I am looking forward to that. What's cool is if you buy it on Xbox One or PS4, Chris, they just give you the license for PS5 and Xbox oh, One. Nice. Must be digital only then, I'm guessing, for that part. Probably, yeah. Even if you buy that, I don't know how it works with the disc. That's what's interesting, too, is the PS5 is coming out with a cheaper version that's no disc drive at all. You can get it cheaper. Yeah, it's, too, it's so all it's digital. So it's download only. Jeremy told me today he's going to buy me a PS5. Yeah, because I got busted. So we have two PlayStation 4s, okay? Mm-hmm. One he's borrowed out to one of his friends. To Derek. And then today, at my birthday party, he was like, oh, Kara, David and Jared are stopping over. I was like, why? He was like, well, um, they're going to be borrowing the PlayStation 4. And I was like, yours? And he's like, well. No, mine's with Derek. I've got two PS4s. <laughs> not one is in my house right now. I'm just borrowing them out to people. So David came over and when he was holding, I was like, you better take care of that. <laughs> <laughs> So Jeremy what was like, oh, I'll buy your PS5, Kara. I was like, dang what, right, you're going to buy your PS5. What are they borrowing it for? Last, Last of, of Us 2. Too. So Last of Us is a really popular zombie That's survival super game. Uh, Gabriel Rivera. Uh, oh, yeah. Yep. He's he been, was a he's been... uh, very active commenter on our first live stream there. He uh, the um... he runs the Latin gaming channel. Oh, yeah. Right. He's been posting a lot about that. How excited his, he is. On his, yeah. pl- on his uh, Facebook page. Did that just come out or something? It like? just came mm-hmm. out. Yep. So when our friend Jared, he's playing it, and so he's going to the share it with david or something he he's gonna give so he owns last of us the first one so, oh, he's so david's playing gonna be playing two, the last of us one david's gonna play gotcha. the main one okay and then is that a multiplayer can you like online I don't play or no i think so i think it's a single player story only game weren't they making a movie out of that or something maybe i don't know i i don't know anything about last of us the big i mean that's a big playstation exclusives you've got uncharted 
God Last of, of Us, God of War, Horizon Zero Dawn, Horizon which they're Zero coming Dawn. out with a new one. Horizon uh, One Dawn. Yeah, right. Horizon Forbidden Frontier or something. You missed Chris joke. Said a Zero Dawn, One Dawn. No Dawn. <laughs> you guys are so funny. Horizon Twilight. Oh my goodness. Anyway. Wait. Twilight I'm just jokes? opposite of Dawn. I don't know. It's like. Well, apparently it's like gonna Twilight. be a series maybe now. Of of uh, Last of Us. Yeah. Let oh. me uh, let me let me investigate it a little bit further. Okay. So anyway, so Jeremy's excited about flying games. I'm just excited about uh, that game. I'm gonna love. I know. For I, sure. Like I said, I told him I would, I would try it. The one thing I do like, so they do have a multiplayer like PvP. You can choose to either play online. No, it's with... better, Chris. It's PVE multiplayer. Oh. So it's 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 like a raid almost. So you get a group. So it's your computer controlled characters versus or your characters that are human controlled versus a CPU. You like, can choose star between destroyer. playing against other people or playing against an AI. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure. Like the, as much, I knock PVP a lot. The people that get enjoyment from it, I don't want to take away from what they enjoy right. doing. Right. I'm just not going to be participating in it. Right, right. The the one where you're playing against the computer, I'll do that. But when I'm playing against somebody else, I can only deal with so many salty eleven year olds wrecking my day. Right, <laughs> that's exactly it. It's like, dude, it's like, you shouldn't even be allowed to play this. Go and play like a like. Go play Minecraft. To, yeah. To me, the best multiplayer experience is always when a game comes out because it's a clean slate. There's no meta at that point. Right. There's everybody's trying it out, so you get just a wide variety of real like skills and levels yeah. and differences, and everyone's like. There hasn't been time for people to coordinate like top tier MLG people do. But besides that, like you hop into matchmaking, you get a pretty good experience. I hopped on to Halo. I was going to say, guess Chief what Jeremy's Edition. been playing lately? Halo's Master Chief Edition, just to get some good old, you know, Halo 2 going on. Halo 2, you yeah. can You can set your matchmaking to Halo 1, Halo 2, Halo. We can all of it. So I was like, just give me just Halo 2, please. I hopped on to Halo 2. And like the first game or two, I had a, a blast. There was one game where it limited it to just snipers. I couldn't even spawn. It would be like headshot dead, headshot dead, headshot dead. I'm like, it's just bad spawn points at that I was point. Like, it's like, what's super wrong annoying. with like people playing this game right now? Well, like, it's like you can, there's ways you can force your spawn points. So it's like once your team actually sets up, yep. they know they know exactly where to stand to set to put people yeah. in certain spots so that you can just be like, like yep. you said, every time someone spawns and they're instantly dead. So the one thing I liked about Destiny is I feel like I never had a bad spawn point when I'm playing Destiny. Oh, Maybe they maybe. happened. They have. You just very don't rare. It was very rare. You spawn in and then somebody Nova bombs you or uses their super or... Again, it's, it was very rare for that to happen. More often than not, you had a good spawn point. Because they, they didn't try to spawn you next to an enemy. And, like, if the enemy had taken over the point where you were originally spawning, they would spawn you at a different point. And they'd put you at their spawn, because they're usually not added at that point. Yeah. yeah. So but they were it, pretty good at trying to make sure you weren't spawning near an enemy. There's a lot of technology between that and Halo 2. It, there is. There is. So, Last of Us is in the works at HBO from the Chernobyl creator, oh. Craig, oh, Craig no Mazin and Neil Druckmann. I might watch that. They did a real I good job with Chernobyl. I Chernobyl. Yeah. Oh, that was a good show. So yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, there's more details about it on The Hollywood Reporter. I'm not going to get into it too far Speaking... because I don't understand any of the names in there because I never saw Chernobyl. Right. So. Speaking of uh, HBO, we talked about this, this with my younger brother today. Did you ever watch Perry Mason? Like reruns of Perry Mason, the detective? A lawyer, right? Yeah, la- lawyer, detective guy, yeah. Their HBO is redoing it. Interesting. Yeah. I, I've never seen it. I, I used to watch it every once in a while on Me TV with my parents, because that's what we would watch. Yeah, did HBO do something new? We, we back when we were talking about streaming services, we were talking about all the different options. So they had HBO Go, they had HBO Now, and now there's HBO Max. Is, is that where you get everything? I don't, I don't know. Well, I don't now know is now is now is the one if you don't have a subscription to HBO, you can just get. So that was like the one we would use. Yeah, but then Go is the one like, where if you have a cable subscription, it's just free. Yep. And you to be able to just watch it. So that I kind of got, but I don't know what Max is. And it's just like, I see nothing but ads for Max right now. And oh, it's like, I haven't seen any HBO Max ads. Yeah, I don't know. They're all over my Facebook. Oh. You know what's all over my Facebook? Spice Kit, or Spice God. I From you searching Spice for Star Wars every day? No, no. <laughs> just random, just freaking ad. So here's, so my sister has a YouTube channel called Stuff Lab. Right. YouTube.com slash Stuff Lab. <laughs> uh, <laughs> And uh, so she'll be like, hey, if you see any random, like, interesting things advertised on Facebook or whatever, like, send it to me and let me know, whatever, <laughs> right? And so it's just, like, it's just this random, like, seasoning company, right? 
But they're running so many freaking ads. So, like, I saw one. I was like, oh, that's kind of interesting. So, I just used the snipping tool and just, like, s- grabbed a screenshot of it. Right. Of the ad. And I sent that to, to my sister. And then, like, I never clicked on it or interacted with it at all. Other than, like, right. my screen was, like, paused there for, like, 40 seconds when I did the freaking grab. Yeah. Right? And then it's like every day I see a new ad. I have like seven completely different, unique, sponsored, advertised, Spice God promotion things that I've like clipped now. Jeez. And it's like almost like a game to see if I can find a new one every day. And it's like, <laughs> how much money are they spending on this? So then my sister reached out to him and be like, hey, it's like I'm interested in testing some of your stuff or whatever, you know, she's like, I don't have a huge channel, but it's like, this is the type of stuff that I do, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, oh, we're so, it's like, we're so crazy busy right now. It's like, blah, blah, blah. It's like, well, you spent $20 million on advertising. No right? Wonder. Seriously. I mean, no wonder crazy you're busy. slammed. I was going to say, you know so, what ads I've been getting? Uh, baby ads. Yep. That's it. <laughs> the- Pregnancy clothing, strollers, first year books, every- diapers, lots of diapers. That's all I've been I'm getting. Glad I'm, I'm, I'm getting back relief, so that circle thing I was telling you about where you, like, roll on it, and yeah. then truffle hot sauce. Well, truff is awesome. Have you have tried oh, truff? It's so freaking good. What made you try it? When Marty had it. Oh, Wait, what it. is it? Truff? It's, it's, it's a hot sauce. It's truffle-infused hot sauce. I love truffles. And they, uh, so, and Gwen and Marty, are, again, my sister, uh, yeah. are huge hot sauce fans. They have every possible hot sauce you can think of. And Truff is like their like number one go to. Really, because the ads are impressive. They are really good. It looks like something Peter would shoot. I think they they had a Peter probably did. They yeah, had right. a like a limited edition one around like Christmas time last year. They got those like three times the price or something maybe, and they said it was really good. Sounds like something okay. Peter would also do with his company. So maybe I love it's secretly truffles. Peter's own company. I, I forget. Yeah. Do you like mushrooms? And I know you don't like weird pizzas and food and stuff. Yeah, no, it's like, and I understand that truffles are a mushroom or whatever, but it's like truffle oil, so it's yeah. like you don't get it. Yeah. Like with mushrooms, it's not the flavor; it's the consistency. It's the texture. I just like I have a very like texture averse palate. I yeah. was gonna say when so when I was in Rome, um, we stayed in the outside of city center, and uh, the street we were on had a pizza place, and they had a mashed potato truffle pizza. Hmm. I would make that for you sometime if I knew you'd eat it. But I, what I do is I chop up mushrooms pretty fine. And then I, like, saute them in truffle oil. Ooh. <sighs> so you were... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you guys were... Sarah needs a minute. Let's... <laughs> you were talking about texture so and, like, in your mouth. Yeah. Um, I It's for the first time in my life. I've seen gory photos before. Mm-hmm. Um, I have never read any thing that was gory to the point i couldn't handle it it happened to me today really it happened to me today and i wanted to tell you in the worst way why didn't you i could tell it right now I, w- but w- it w- might not be safe for the podcast yeah we'll, we'll see it's it not inappropriate it's just was it like was it like a depiction of a real thing or was it, it was an like- absolutely depiction of a real event okay and I read it today, and it was like, the second I started reading, and I was like, no, you couldn't have done that. No, you didn't. They did. Oh, please don't go into detail. And I was like reading it. I was like, oh, oh, ah, the detail. Ah, ah. So, what, so what did you read it on? Maybe we can just give people some clues if they want to find it on their own. Reddit. You read it on Reddit. Is it today I effed up? Oh, okay. By mistaking my tongue scraper for my razor blade. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, I, we don't need to describe that anymore. All right. You oh seemed my gosh. very interested until I told you what it was. And I said, I couldn't read the detail anymore because of how detailed just, this person just, yeah, no, goes I, into. So oh I'll leave it at gosh. that. Yeah. I will like, leave it at that. Yeah, so I, yeah, go to r slash T-I-F-U and search for that. I mean, how would you deal with that? Like, you know, 20, things- over 20 stitches. Uh, can't barely breathe. Can't talk. Geysers of blood everywhere. Well, the the the, oh. the plus side of this is allegedly because of like how important tongues are, they heal pretty quickly. I hope pretty damn quick. So, yeah, what if that will like affect your taste taste buds? That's what I was worried about because that's my number like, one fear. So the guy had OCD and he keeps everything a certain way in his thing, and so he was like running late for work, and he keeps this here and then this here, but like somebody switched it on him or something. So then like he just went out of reflex and just like went for it. Well, but how it, do it goes you mistake into, your razor? But no, it goes into detail about like what happened and like what it, it is like mind blowing. But how do you? So also mis- like I, not that I thought about that specific circumstance, but like when it comes to like specialty tools and stuff, when, like for like oral hygiene, 
I just rely on my toothbrush. Like, yeah. I know that I can do a good enough job right. with my toothbrush. Like, I don't... If we like, want to get gross, like, I only ever got a tongue scraper when I started dating Kara because I wanted to make sure that she was into hygiene. So I was like, better make sure my stuff's there. It's crazy what comes off on it. Like, it's simple. It's just a piece of metal with two rubber handles, and you just pull it on your tongue. I have patience. Well, I've, 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 I've always seen the ones that are, like, it's just, it's like a handle that comes up, and then it's like a hard angle plastic with some, like, texture on it. To, so the it's best, more like a brush for your, it's more like a got, tongue brush than a tongue scraper. The best thing you can use, it's, we found, it's, the one we found was by Dr. Tongue, but it's got two rubber handles and then a metal bar. It looks like the St. Louis Arch. Okay. Yeah, it's got like a thin metal bar that goes across it, and then you just like start at the back and scrape forward. It's not sharp. No, it's not sharp. It's, it's probably dull, like but it's... one or two millimeters thick. Okay. Um, but yeah, you so just it's scrape. It's kind of like braces wire. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah, but then like it's, it's like a wide. bar. It it's looks wide like but oh, thin, okay. You yeah. know. I see. I see. So it's a strip of metal. And if you then, literally yeah. grab the St. Louis arch and went like this and pulled it down your tongue, that's what it looked like. Yeah. And it it does a really good job. I've had patients complain that they have bad breath, and I'm like, do you clean your tongue? And they're like. No, I'm like, try that and talk to me next time. <laughs> you know, well, because I have some uh, less than uh, desirable habits. Like I work really hard to make sure that I get like my mouth clean, right? Mm-hmm. And that's one of those things where it's like, I, it's like I'm making sure. Like there's two spots I find in particular that make a big difference, and it's like it's the tongue, and then it's like the back, yeah. like the far Behind back the parts, yeah, of the yep. of the mouth. It's like, you can floss. I know you said you don't floss, but you can floss behind your molars, and it actually helps quite a lot. So, yeah, it's just like, I have a permanent lower retainer. Those are a pain in the butt. And that's honestly the number one reason why I don't floss. Do you have a chain that's each tooth? Yeah. Yeah. It... If you ever go to your dentist, see if they'll replace it with a wire that attaches canine to canine. That way, when you floss, you just have to stick it through one, and then you can just kind of slide it along. Yeah, get like of... the front five instead of yep. yeah, yeah, because it's because like, you get like these these little flexible like base like sewing needle type things. Yeah. Then you have to loop it through runners. and do the thing. Then you have to pull it out and do the next one. It's like who so, could be bothered? <laughs> you I, can seem be learn to be a seamstress and floss your teeth. At the I'll same tell time. you what: when people come in and they don't floss their lower retainers. It is a bloodbath when I get to flossing them because the gums are get, like, the gums are being irritated by the retainer, mm-hmm. and then people aren't flossing it, which makes it worse. So when I try to s- get that bridge threader in there, I mean they're just gushing blood. I'm like, I'm so sorry. That's what happened to the guy who mistaked his tongue scraper. Yeah, that's the, okay. So speaking of, did you of find Reddit, it? No, I'm not. Oh. I, I'm not going on oh. that. But one of the things we want to start doing is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> how do you leave that yeah that we're gonna try well so like because we're on reddit like there's uh we brought this up in a star wars every day kind of early on is r slash star wars league so we kind of want to do like sort of like the yeah i don't, I don't sure know how we, i don't want to i don't know how we should sort of have it sort of by hot uh, no go go best. top for the week top yeah top for yeah. the week you can do top and then by the week that way we're always fresh for the past seven days okay so we're sort of we're r slash star wars leagues top for the week and like basically, this sometimes it's spoilers, sometimes it's speculation, sometimes it's like, you know, people just being like, "Wouldn't it be cool if?" or whatever. So it covers a lot of different stuff. We're just gonna run over a couple of things on r slash Star Wars leaks and see if there's anything that interests us. So um, there's a screenshot from Hera in the Squadrons trailer. Boom. Talked about that, yo, because we good, yo. So that was that's the <laughs> so we hit on that's that the one. the top post apparently. I'm excited about that. Like if you can play as Hera, that's a big deal. That's I a will big play the deal. game if you can play as Hera. That's hundred percent. See, like that's that is the power of Star Wars. If you've got a character that you love so much, you're willing to get through the gameplay just to be that character. That's yeah. Harrison cool. Dool. You have have you watched Rebels yet? Chris is not. not. Yet. Too busy watching other shows that are yeah. disappointing to me. Right. <laughs> Harris Dula is awesome. She's a like, great character. Her dad served a uh, cha- Cham. Cham. You, you met him you, in the Clone Wars. In the Ryloth. He's episode. the blue one that, yeah, and they'll Cham is what they called him. So Dula. Okay. That's Hera's dad. Yep. So her dad served during the Clone Wars, and cool. now she's serving during the Rebellion. So, yeah, so that was the top one. Then the next one is Ewan McGregor has said the Disney Plus Obi-Wan Kenobi series will be using some of the same technology that the Mandalorian used. So the volume, that LED yes. set space. That's pretty I cool. I am stoked for Kenobi. Like, Chris, that's what we need. For I would love one project. of those, dude. Yeah. Are you kidding me? That would be incredible. Wait, the what? The, for this room to talk well, project. Well, so I, I want to I talk about, not the project itself, but the idea of using LED panels to, like, project imagery and stuff. Oh. I randomly, like, probably six or eight months before The Mandalorian came out, I was actually 
I was on YouTube and I fell down this hole about rear projection because that's how a lot of stuff like that used to be done. Right. So you'd have a screen and you'd actually project through the screen whatever background you wanted for your really? people in front of you, like your film or whatever. It was like a green screen technology has never been like the greatest or whatever. It was like one right. of the earlier compromises to get people into a place that they couldn't be. Right. right. And then. Well, this guy was explaining, he was talking about how, like, moving forward, people are going to start using LED technology to do these type of projections because you can you can have, like, refresh sync with your cameras to make sure that you're not getting any, like, running lines and stuff right. like that. And I was like, it's like, oh, that's kind of interesting. And I never even thought, like, on the scale at which they do it for the Mandalorian. Right. But in terms of, like, like people are talking, it was like, you can replace, like, windows with these things. And someone could be looking out a window out of whatever thing that could be out there. Some you can beautiful, replace whatever. nice, just beach, tropical beach. Just Yeah, exactly. <sighs> But then it's, like, not even considering, like, upgrading to the scale of, like, a full set right. of those panels. I want to talk about the window really quick. That was when Galaxy's Edge first came out, and I'm still under the impression that it's coming. There was supposed to be a hotel that the windows were all LED panels. Yeah. That when you were in the hotel, it made it look like you were going through space. That's sweet. So, like, the thing would punch to hyperdrive every now and then, and it would be, like, blur by, and then it would slow down, and you could, like, look out and yeah, what see. Yeah, ha- I remember them talking it's, about it's the It's still coming. Is it? Yes, they We're still We're staying there, yo. It. We are staying there. Yeah. Yep. I don't care how much it is. We'll have to sell all there. the equipment. Sell yeah. our firstborn. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah, worth it. <laughs> You're a no, true actually, Star Wars fan. You want to hear something? That I, was, I was talking to somebody about this the other day. Um, by the time we go to Celebration... We'll have had the tickets for a year before that kid is two years old. Right. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Well, we, Jeremy and I, <laughs> we were talking. We might be done having kids by the time Star Wars Celebration the comes The next along. one comes around. Because yeah. we, we, we want two kids. And this comes in December. If we just, like, give it six months, go for another one. I mean, we could have, you know, six-month-old by yeah. the time Star Wars Celebration rolls around again. Yeah, but like, you, you guys bought the tickets a year before... This child was a thing. <laughs> yes, I know. And there'll be two, basically, by the time Celebration happens. So, That's why it was so devastating to have it be canceled. When I understand it, but... When Celebration does happen, I've already thought of the costumes for our kids. Well, obviously. One will be Baby Yoda. Yeah. The other will be Morai, right, which is Ahsoka's owl pal. Nice. So when I'm dressed as Ahsoka, I will have Morai <laughs> as well. And Jeremy can dress as the Mandalorian and have Baby Yoda. For one of the days. I still want to go to a con as Rex. Well, yeah, heck yeah, obviously. You got plenty of time now. He's mad fly. Dang right he is. Uh, let's see. So then the next highest post is um, the, up, the the Squadron's promo was coming out. Yeah. Another person with another still from Hera in the Squadron trailer. Hera's popular. So that's a big deal. That yeah. is a big deal for this week. I'm not the only person who's excited, apparently. All right, so uh, do you guys know what Alphabet Squadron is? Yes, yes, I've read it. It's a good book. Okay, so as someone said, I'm pretty sure I just found the new Alphabet Squadron book early at Barnes & Noble. What? what? That is the new one. Oh, my gosh. I know so, where we're going after this. Dang right we are. So, Thanks yeah, so those boy. are the top five posts in r slash Star Wars leaks of the last week. So I thought that wasn't getting released until... Oh, maybe I think it's released next month. Maybe well, we were swinging f- by Barnes and saying, oh, right. They're good so books. Excited. Kara's read the first one. The first one was good. Yep. Like it took a, it took a second to get into it because so Alphabet Squ- Squadron is about I believe it's five people who there's an A wing, a Y wing, an X wing, a B wing, and a U wing, and which is oh, why they're called Alpha, the Alphabet okay, Squadron. Okay. Um, but they're all from different squadrons that have been taken out by the um empire no so these are the ragtag survivors yep and so they end up getting thrown in and Hera ends up being the general over them all okay cool and um so where was i going with this new the new book came out the new book yeah anyway this is just the continuation of that so anyway it's really good really good really good i'm so excited so So, yeah oh it's slow that's right because you have to get to know all of these people Fair. Like, they start each story, like, with the story of each individual person, and you're like, who are all these people? Because they kind of skip all over the place. And then finally, like, mid-book, it comes central, and it's like, here's our group. Okay. You know? It's kind of so nice. It's just... it's, if, you can, if you can tolerate it, it's kind of nice yeah. doing it that way, because then you care about all the characters when the right. stuff actually starts. Right. right. All on an individual basis. Sorry. Pregnancy brain. I was like, where was I going? Yeah. Yes. So yeah, so definitely some interesting Star Wars stuff happening this week. Absolutely, mm-hmm. you can see why people are excited. And the same thing is on a different note; it's not Star Wars related at all. 
I'm excited for the next Paper Mario game. Whoop, whoop. Yeah. I, I was so, super appreciative of Nintendo not hyping it. Because I can't handle Like, they announced it, and then it comes out in July. So it's like a month and a half away. So it's coming out next month? Yeah. What? That's why I'm excited. So the Paper Mario series is like an RPG style, right? Yep. Yeah, so the Super Mario RPG was like one of my favorites. Oh, the original Paper Mario is one of my favorites. Oh. So, and then like they they added the thing where you can like turn to 3D and then turn back to 2D and all No, that. just give me the original Paper Mario. But that was the thing. So, that's the perfect example of the game that in my head has crystal clear graphics because the way they were on that system, they just looked really good. I guarantee if I went back and played it and it looks like Super Mario 64 with just all the Blocky. Honestly, I like the way Super Mario 64 looks. Oh, it's good. It's good. But it's, it's just not like, like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's low, like low poly 3D modeling. Or it's yeah. the lowest poly. Yeah. <laughs> but they pulled it off. So. Um, so I'm trying to think of if there's anything else we need to hit. Email Jeremy. He's real sad and lonely. He you can email us depressed. at contact at Rise of the Podcast. Um, you know, comment down below if, you, if there's anything like we're more than happy to communicate with you people at any avenue which is right. most convenient to you. There's over 3,000 people who follow the Rise of the Podcast page. They've got to want to interact with us in some capacity. They just Seriously. want to be force fed memes. That's, That's the- it. That is <laughs> it. That's you can it. contact us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, whatever you want. We're just on Twitter us. at ROTP Tweets. We've yeah. tweeted like one time. This we're we're true. old and don't know how Twitter works. Nope. <laughs> I'm horrible at Twitter. Uh, if if ever we have a TikTok, I'll be surprised. But you never Which know. Is never. It could be fun. I don't know. It's just like I don't. I don't. I'm for it, but I just need a uh, sacrificial device to install it on, so the Chinese government doesn't hack my. Yeah, that's <laughs> what we, we'll just buy it. You can buy me a new phone, and then we'll turn my crappy old phone into the TikTok cricket phone, phone. <laughs> or the TikTok phone. <laughs> cricket. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Maybe I was thinking of Cricket Wireless. I'll get you a phone you're on thinking Cricket of Wireless. Cricket, yeah. The Cricket Amy's borrowing me. There's too much stuff named Cricket. There There's is. There's a lot of crickets. There's a cricket Jiminy from cricket. Mulan. Yeah. <laughs> Cricky the Cricket. Um, <laughs> so uh, 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 this is something that I wanted to p- say earlier, and I always forget to say it. It's like on our ongoing march to try and get to 300 subscribers, we're super close. If you enjoy us, share us with your friends i'm sure like most people that are dorks aren't dorks alone right you know so it's like if you like what we're doing you want to share us like we want to reach as many people as possible and have as many interactions as possible maybe you'll be the person who introduces someone to jeremy that will email him yes (laughs) he's desperate and jeremy will be forever happy a giveaway Uh, is next that's all i'm saying yeah so it's like should we set some sort of like 300 subscriber goal sure we should so maybe we'll, we'll, okay, okay, here's what we'll do. We will finally do the the video where Jeremy tases himself with a dog collar while Kara does the battery. Mm, fine. The battery. But is Jeremy it. has to be on eight. Whatever the top setting is, that's fine. That's eight. Where I wish it was nine because it's nine volt battery, nine on a dog collar. Yeah, it's only. I'm seven sure or we eight. can bring it up to go higher. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is oh, how no, you get two. We need to do a four and a five at the same time. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> balance it out <laughs> right all right so that's so that's what, so 300 subscriber milestone goal established uh if you don't know what we're talking about it's from an old podcast where we were talking you better about not make this a podcast story <laughs> how Kara has never uh touched a nine volt battery to her tongue where everybody else on earth has so jeremy said so to help mitigate Kara's fear of touching the nine volt battery to her tongue he will take a maximum voltage dog training shot collar at the same time. So that will be the goal once we get to 300 subscribers. Subscribe if you're not already. Ring the <laughs> notification bell to be notified every time we upload a video. We're going to be going live at some point in the near future. I've been threatening this for a year. It's going to happen. <laughs> we, I mean, baby steps. We made another step since last time. Last yeah. Absolutely. Now we're just waiting for municipal reprisal. <laughs> yes, that's it. <laughs> uh, comment down below anything you want to hear us talk about what you think of the top five things in r slash star wars leaks if there's any other things you we should check out on the internet any other topics you want to hear us talk about like this video if you made it this far in i can't believe that it's the last thing that i mentioned but if you're this far <laughs> into it and you don't like it dislike the video at that point i guess I right? don't throw, a, throw a dislike on it show us that this isn't the type of content that you want to see <laughs> either way we just want to interact with you guys we have so much fun talking about this Thank you guys so much for watching, and of course... May the force be with you.